a few stories here about voting in the upcoming election because a lot of Americans right now are asking, is there going to be an election at all in November? So from the Atlantic.com, why Americans might not trust the election results. Many are already worried about the integrity of November's vote. <laughs> Nearly three in five Americans don't have confidence in the honesty of our elections, a February Gallup poll found. Republicans, Democrats, state officials, grandmothers, first-time voters, the politically engaged, the anti-institutionals, pretty much the only thing they could agree on was their doubts about the integrity of our democracy. Is it getting better? <laughs> well, let's go to the Wall Street Journal, WSJ.com. D.C. lets voters submit ballots by email after mail problems. Some states that are preparing for voting by mail to be more popular in the November election than in past year's hiccups on Tuesday. The Washington, D.C. Board of Elections, inundated with complaints from voters who said they didn't receive absentee ballots in the mail, created an unusual workaround for Tuesday's primary, allowing voters to submit ballots by email. Welcome to the technocracy. It matters not to votes, but who counts the vote. That conflicts with security recommendations typically given by experts, but one local official said she thought it was worth the risk given the unusual circumstances. Quote, I guess there are Russian hackers that can do anything, but I doubt they're really concerned with the Ward 2 DC election, said council member Alyssa Silverman. And in a way, she's right. You see where she's going with this, right? Maybe she's like, well, I'm going with this. Localization! Localization! Hey, much less room for corruption, manipulation of the elections and of, of politics in general when it's localized. Yeah. There's no incentive for corruption when the power at stake is so low and the means of accountability are relatively high. And the ability to subvert the will of a small population when exit polls are reasonably reliable at this point, hmm, we'd have government a much more in line with the will of the people just with the effect that localization would have on the integrity of elections. So back to the Atlantic. We almost certainly won't know who won the presidency on election night. We definitely won't know who won many of the lower level races. In 2018, a Senate race in Arizona didn't get settled for a week. Some House races were still being decided. By the way, that was the one I was almost in. Still being decided around Christmas, inevitably pockets of margin-shifting votes will pop up late, giving some people the false impression that they are suddenly appearing in convenient spots to change the results. Now, going back about this whole conundrum in the national conversation in the Atlantic story, um, back to the second paragraph, and that was before the pandemic made everything worse. Now, on top of questions from President Trump about the legitimacy of the election rush interference, claims of fraud, history of voter suppression, all sorts of new worries because of corona, long lines, unsafe sites, canceled elections, closed voting locations, absentee ballots faked or claimed to be faked, the collapse of a voting infrastructure that's been haphazardly reassembled on the fly. Now, why do they want it to be like this? It's not just, oh, we can cheat this election or that election. It's because when things are confusing, how do we get election results? From the mainstream media on election nights. Who really decides who's the president? CNN, ABC, NBC, Fox News. The results are in. We got, who calls the election? Well, Fox News closed Florida at 9.15 p.m. Eastern time where they could just Wait, Fox? We don't, we don't have like a, a national government system of, of even keeping track of this. But it makes it much harder for there to be any change in the Senate. Well, last time we went with Democrats and Republicans, so we're pretty sure that this time we're going to go with Democrats and Republicans. Whoever your pick for president is, if the other guy wins, will you really believe it? Will you trust the margin? Will you trust the results of the lower level races with fewer voters and less public attention? 
As Jocelyn Benson, the Michigan Secretary of State, told us a few weeks ago, there are a lot of uncertainties in this time. Democracy could be one of them. On May 20, Benson woke up to Donald Trump misinterpreting her decision to mail absentee ballot applications to everyone in her state. He tweeted that she was mailing absentee ballots, which he later corrected, and that she was doing so illegally and without authorization, which didn't make sense. Then he claimed that he was going to hold up funding to Michigan, though there's no funding for him to hold up, and that absentee ballots constituted voter fraud, though he'd used one himself earlier this year to vote in Florida's presidential primary. He issued the same threat to Nevada, then seemed to back off, then struggled in an Oval Office appearance to explain what he was talking about. In the days since, the president, who has repeatedly claimed that the election he won was rigged against him, has tweeted several more accusations of fraud, and on Tuesday in the Rose Garden insisted that people who can't legally vote are going to be sent ballots in California, though they won't be. So, jumping ahead now to CNN.com, CNN poll, Trump losing ground to Biden amid chaotic week. Not just that. A new CNN poll conducted by SSRS finds Trump's approval rating down seven points in the last month as the president falls further behind presumptive Democrat nominee Joe Biden, whose support now stands at its, high, at its highest level and CNN and CNN polling. And from Mediaite.com, our next story in the queue, just in, stunning new CNN poll shows Biden 14 poll points over Trump. 14 points. The poll asked, suppose that the presidential election was being held today and you had to choose between Joe Biden as the Democratic Party's candidate and Donald Trump as the Republican Party's candidate, who would be who would you be more likely to vote for? 55 Biden, 41 Trump. The 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 biggest spread. <clears throat> Remember, I've been I've been telling you for a while now that the the one of the underlying narratives here i mean there's the there, there, there's a sort of like surface narrative of covid 19 george floyd there's there's the 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 you know underlying narrative of they're using the money to rip us off and increase government power there's like a you know a deeper narrative of what we don't know is actually happening between competing super class powers right now but somewhere below the surface, what all this represents is a trap that the Democrats set for Trump. The uh, Democrat wing of the Socialist Party is in competition with the Republican wing of the Socialist Party. And I love seeing them fight amongst each other. I love seeing them, you know, fighting over the levers of power rather than using all of their energy to just use them against us as they do in, you know, communist one party China. Yeah, and it, it just saves them, uh, you know, a little energy that they'd spend on this charade, this whole political show of distraction and, you know, the confidence game of, of the racket of government. Because, you know, if they had included Joe Jorgensen in this poll, the Libertarian nominee for president, things would look a lot different. But they want to keep you in this two party system. And when they fight, we see that, you know, Corona was like a trap they set for Trump. And he got one foot in and thought he could get out, and then found out his other foot that he was trying to stand on whoop, slipped out from underneath him on a banana peel named George Floyd. And next thing you know, He's down 14 points. But they are not going to let it stay like this. And I'll tell you why. The system is deliberately engineered for the two parties in power to stay more or less neck and neck the whole time. 
Because if it got imbalanced, it would be very easy for a third party insurgency. But because they keep them balanced, they're able to bully people into, well, if you don't vote for the lesser evil, the greater evil is going to win. Well, how about voting for not evil? Joe Jorgensen, Libertarian, on the ballot in 2020. What we have to look forward to in November of this year? Anybody's guess.